Okay, we're going to be uh, reading out of uh, Management and the Law. Uh, Samuel Fox is the author. Uh, I'm here not promoting the book, uh, you know, based on trying to promote the author. It's just that if you want to get into the mind of where the legal system is, uh, it'd be best to read about it. The um, unique thing I found with most of the people who have been researching law, well, we'll have to call it legal in the world that we exist in right now, what's surrounding you with the legal governments. The problem is most people have jumped right into the middle of the pool and they didn't really get a handle on the whole foundation of what's going on in legal. And that's a problem because you can end up grabbing a little tidbit here and there and it's, it's, it just isn't fitting together. And that's where people get into trouble in courts, uh, defending things uh, that they really do not know um, is going to harm them. They just grabbed a little bit of the law and I think we've seen a lot of these, I would call them legalistic uh, Freeman gurus disappear. Um, it's only because they really don't have uh, the substance of what they're talking about. And so lacking the spiritual side you would never see the legal side as what it is. So we're going to read out of, uh, this was about the best I could uh, find to explain how they're birthing legal entities and how they come about. And they don't hide the idea even of the concept of or conception of a birth through a birth certificate. So we're going to uh, read out of chapter two. Uh, it's not a, it's not a long read. I'm only going to read you roughly a, a few paragraphs out of it, but uh, uh, it should explain basically what they're doing and listen closely because there's clues in how these writers write. Even sometimes I don't even think they're aware that they actually are giving you the clues or or giving you the answers. Sometimes they just say it because they've been robotically trained to say it that way, and so they they teach and they write in that manner, not even knowing what they're saying. Um, so under this, it's called Law and the Economic Order, the Economic Order Constituency. The world in which we live comprises several orders, among them the social, the political, the ecclesiastical, the military, and the economic. The last name, which I could always say the last name, is referred to in everyday usage as the business world. Business administration is concerned exclusively with the economic order. Therefore, at the outset, it is necessary to have some general idea of what the business world is and how it operates. Just as the social order is composed of all the individual human beings in the world, the economic order is made up of all the individual business units in the business world. Each unit is regarded as a separate economic entity. And the sum of all the economic entities at one moment constitutes the business universe or economic order. Each economic unit is regarded as separate and distinct from all others. The true significance and meaning of economic entities may best be grasped by the an analogy with social entities or human beings who make up the social order. As individuals operate in a society, there are natural and social interrelationships between them that take place in the social order. Because of the characteristics of human beings, these interrelationships tend to create friction, the more so far as their conduct is unrestrained and uncontrolled. Consequently, an institution known as the law has been introduced into our society. It proclamates the rules required to regulate the conduct of individuals with one another in the social order. The purpose of these legal rules is to prevent friction and to attempt to attain, insofar as is practical, a harmonious and peaceful coexistence among the individual constituents of the social order. In the same way, the law is also required to prescribe the conduct of economic entities in the economic order. These regulations provide the rules of the game, so to speak, by which relations become economic entities are to be governed. The purpose of the law in this domain, as well as to avert friction and promote harmony among economic entities in their everyday business transactions and to ensure the best interests of the public, 
as is expected in an advanced society. In order for the system to work, it is absolutely necessary that every economic entity be subject to control by the law. Without a superior force to control activities, every entity would issue its own rules and make its own decisions. It would be impossible to bring disputants into an impartial forum to settle business disagreements, and anarchy would result. With human frailties naturally permeating the economic society, the inability to define economic units as entities amenable to the law would obviously result in a chaotic economic order. To avoid this, it is necessary to make each economic entity subject to the law by regarding it as a legal entity. Hence, every economic entity or business unit must receive at its inception a birth certificate, so to speak, pronouncing its birth as a legal entity in order to be recognized by the law as in S, in existence. I don't think I probably could have written it more straightforward. It's a lot to grasp. That's why I read it slowly. Uh, there's many that won't have the book, so I can probably uh, find time to actually just take scan pictures of this and put it up on the video so you'll have a chance to be able to read it slowly because it is a lot to digest. But he's really telling you how it has to run and they can't have this operate in legal without creating a legal existence of something. So we've not in reality been birthed into legal. Um, that, that's a concept that was imprinted on us to believe in and you have to believe in it for it to work as a religion, as a faith. So the secular world or humanism is now the new faith um, that eventually will lead to worship of the state. 